morning. This is Russell Howard with good news to live by, and it's an absolutely wonderful day that God has blessed us this day. Thank you for joining us here at Richland Road Church of Christ as we try to share the good news of Jesus Christ in every possible way. We are in an exciting study to the book of Philippians today, and today we're looking at part two of how to bring out the bring bring out the best in people. How to bring out the best in people. But before we get to that, a couple of little announcements we want to continue to remind you of. Please continue to remember Bonnie Blankenship, who is at Riverside Hospital, as well as remember Carrie Rossiter, who will be having surgery tomorrow, Wednesday, at Marion General Hospital. And Melissa Hines will be having surgery at... Uh, at Riverside Hospital tomorrow as well. So please remember them in prayer. Let them know. Maybe send them a note to them. Let them know how much they are in your prayers and your thoughts. We do continue to encourage you to remember Erica Rich in your prayers. And also we continue to ask that you remember those who've lost loved ones recently in our congregation. And, you know, there's power in prayer. Also, we'd ask that you remember Kathy Keitlinger, who is recovering from her surgery and doing well would remind you to make sure to sign up today we'd like to get out a, a large crowd here this sunday and, and fill each one of the services up we can only have 55 to 60 at each one of our services uh because of the COVID 19 and then of course we have uh, the service for our younger families as well at 11 15. we really would encourage you to get ahead ahead of that because i think there's gonna be a lot of people want to be here for this sunday it's youth sunday our young people will be leading the service race and Holliburn will be preaching Teaching, and uh, that will be a blessing in every way. And then we will be honoring our, our, our elders, will be honoring our graduating seniors of 2020. And so we just want you to be here to encourage them and let them know we love them and we greatly appreciate that. So please be here, sign up. Our services are at 815, 945, and then 11, 1115 with a service for our young families as well at 1115. Do remind you that on July the 5th, we'll be, Lord willing, weather permitting, we'll be having one service at 10 o'clock in the shelter house. It will be outside, and so there'll be less likely of possibly catching the COVID-19, and because it doesn't live so much out in the air, we encourage you to be joining us that day. Bring a long cha lawn chair. We encourage you to bring a pack of lunch, a breakfast, lunch for your family, and let's just be together. And uh, you know what? We're always going to have hindrances, but don't let it hinder your faith in growing in Christ because it can easily do that. And we we don't want Satan to use something like this to keep us away uh, and, and stiffen our faith in Christ and growing in the way God wants us to grow. So we do and also want to remind you Wednesday night of our encounters with Jesus. And, and you can go to our webpage for that or our Facebook page on how to have a part of that. And I'll say more about that tomorrow morning as we get ready for that. But today, we want to get back to Philippians chapter 1. What a great book. Here, the Apostle Paul was in prison, and he was facing some very difficult times. You know, the Philippian jail, I've heard some people have been there, and it's just almost like a hole in the ground. And it wasn't very pleasant at all. And yet he writes this book to the Philippians that's filled with so much encouragement to relationships and life. And, you know, sometimes we find ourselves in a negative vein. We're depressed. We're down. And yet here Paul the Apostle was, was somebody who could have been down. But he made the most of the circumstances he was in. And 17 different times, he uses the word joy, rejoice. And he, he just brings this joy of hope. You know, some people, when they walk in, they just enlighten the room. And some people, well, they enlighten the room once they leave. Well, Paul the Apostle was one of those guys that when he, he came into presence, he brightens the room. He makes the room a lot better. It gives you a sense, a sense of hope. Well, we looked at yesterday in part one of Philippians chapter one, one through 11, on how to bring out the best in people. 
We looked at the fact that you've got to be grateful for the good in people. And Paul began that passage, but says, I thank my God every time I remember you. He concentrated on the good and not on the bad. And we left the first thing that we need to do if we're going to bring out the best in people. You've got to remember the best and forget the rest. Hey, everybody's got some negative stuff in their life. Remember the best and forget the rest. But what brings us to the second point that we need to look at today, if we're going to how to bring out the best in people, you got to practice positive prayer. You got to practice positive prayer. He says in verse 4 of Philippians 1, in all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have Paul the Apostle praying for you? I mean, wow. To have Paul the Apostle praying for you? Is it encouraging, encouragement to know when people say, hey, I've been praying for you. I've been thinking about you. I've been praying for you. You've been, you've been on my mind. I've been talking to the Lord about it. Can you imagine if you got sick or you're facing troubles? And all of a sudden you knew that hundreds of people we're, we're saying your prayer, your name to God. We're lifting up your name to God. And they were praying for you and caring for you. And they had you in their hearts. And what if they were praying in a spirit of joy? As he said here, I always pray with joy. They don't pray because they have to. They pray because they want to. Mary Chase of Atlanta, Georgia, said one time when Georgia was suffering weeks of uh of drought, she said, I appeal to my four-year-old granddaughter, Chandler, to pray that we would get some badly needed rain to help the trees and the flowers. That evening, my daughter overheard Chandler praying, God, Grandma wants some rain, and you have to do what Grandma says. Well, as you know, God doesn't have to do anything that any of us say, whether it's Grandma asking or anyone else. However, don't you know that that grandmother was touched, that her granddaughter was praying because grandma wanted it? Every week, someone will say to me, hey, I want you to know that I'm, I'm praying for you. And I'm going to tell you something. That means so much to me. It makes me want to study harder. It makes me want to work harder. It makes me want to reach out to more people. I mean, it just means a lot to know that someone's praying for me. In Ephesians chapter 6, Paul would say, pray for me. Well, let me tell you what, I need all your prayers you can get, and you do too. We need to be praying. Now, here's a second lesson that we need to learn. If we're going to bring out the best in people, the quickest way to change a relationship from bad to good is start thanking God in prayer for that person. The quickest way to change a relationship from bad to good is start thanking God in prayer for that person and for people. We shouldn't be like the little fellow who said one day when he is sent to his room because he had been bad. A short time later, he came out and he said to his mother, I've been thinking about what I did, and I said a prayer. That's fine, she said. If you ask God to make you good, he'll help you. Oh, I didn't ask him to help me be good, he replied. I asked him to help you to put up with me. Well, if you want to change a relationship from bad to good, it may be starting thanking God in prayer for that person and praying that help us to learn to tolerate people. The two things will happen. It'll change your attitude and it will change them. Positive praying is much more powerful than positive thinking. People may resist our advice, spurn our appeals, reject our suggestions, and not listen to our help. But they are powerless, powerless against our prayers. Hopefully we ask God to help us learn to help us with others and to help us to put up with others. Now, I want you to pause for just a moment and do something for me. I want you to think of someone who really irritates you those irresistible people, those people that just get on your nerves. It, they bring frustration to you to no end. Someone who really makes you suffer when they're in your presence. How many of you could think of someone like that? Do you have somebody in mind? Could it be that God has called 
you to show that person how much you love Jesus by how you respond to them? That's essential, what Paul is saying to the church in Philippians. In Philippians 1, verse 9, verse 11. Let's read on. And this is my prayer, that you love may abound more and more in knowledge, depth of insight, so you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Someone said, there's nothing that makes us love a man so much as praying for him. Matthew 5, 43 to 45, the words of Jesus. You heard it said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, Love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven. I don't, I don't know how much or how often I pray for my love to grow for others. But it's something that needs to be done. And it's true, the more we pray for others, the more we will love others. And generally, if you don't like someone, you don't pray for them. But if you start praying for them, your attitude about them begins to change. Prayers must grow for our love for others to grow. One Sunday morning, a preacher said, Lord, I know it's wrong to hate anyone, but if it ever becomes right, I've got the guy picked out. Do you have somebody picked out? Is there someone in your life that you consider an enemy, an opponent? One who doesn't like it, like you doesn't like you, and give you nothing but trouble in your life. Can you imagine what would happen if every time you think of them, instead of dwelling on the negative, instead you stopped and you prayed for them, and you prayed for good things for them. Can you imagine what would happen? There are four things that Paul prayed for other people. Paul prayed these four things. Number one, pray that we will grow in love. That your love may your love you may your love may be about means to overflow like a tidal wave. Secondly, pray that you will make wise decisions, that you will discern what is best. Number three, pray that they will do the right thing, be pure and blameless, and have a clear conscience. And number four, pray that they will live for God's glory, filled with the fruit of righteousness. Your love will grow. They'll make wise choices. They'll do the right thing, and they will live for God's glory. Paul says, if you want to enjoy people in your life, you need to be grateful for the good, and then you need to practice positive prayer. Today, will you start praying for those people? And when you start encouraging other people, this is Russell Howard with Good News Today. Good news is live by. We hope that you'll join us tomorrow as we look at part the three, how to bring out the best in people. Thank you for joining me. May God bless you as you enjoy his day today. Take care.